Rob here from the Flanagan Homestead. Uh, looking forward to opening season. It's an exciting time of the year. Uh, I've just got in from a cold, wet day outside, and I haven't even opened up the Christmas tree farm yet. But uh, most of us traditionally open up the day after Thanksgiving. I know things are getting earlier and earlier. But uh, I want to talk pricing, a little encouragement, and a few tips uh, that we have as we uh, open up the season and as I warm up by the fire here. Okay, first thing I know a lot of people have been discussing is pricing. How are they going to price their Christmas trees this year? Uh, we're going to move up our prices a little bit, but uh, we're not going to gouge our customers and our guests that we've had for a number of years. Nobles and Nordmans, we're going to move up to $85 for any size tree. Uh, that's uh, $10 more than it was last year. Uh, Grand Furs, we're going to go $65 for any size tree. And Doug Furs will probably still do 50 55. We have a very small selection of those. So, Nobles and Nordmans are the select trees here in the Pacific Northwest. That's where the higher price. I, uh, I know a lot of people price tag each individual tree. We don't do that, and we don't even do it by the foot. Uh, if they're small trees and people want to buy them, they can have them. If not, they're going to grow up to the fuller size trees that we want the following years. Uh, so we just, and if they're a bigger tree, we want them gone because we don't want to keep getting up on ladders and, and shearing them. So we price uh, per tree. You could probably get more money uh, doing it by the foot or tagging individually, but uh, we've just found for the ease of labor and uh, moving the bigger trees out, one size is the price. Harvest season is always an exciting time of the year and a fun time of the year. Uh, my in-laws are potato farmers and alfalfa farmers, and during the harvest, even though it's a ton of hard work, it's a joyous time uh, celebrating the culmination of a hard season. And it should be the same way uh, with Christmas trees even more because you are uh, helping people celebrate their Christmas. So I would encourage you uh, to really keep that mindset that this is a celebration and you're helping people uh, celebrate their Christmas. You are hosting a party at your farm if people are coming out. So uh, smiles should be free, candy canes should be free, they don't cost anything, and, and make people really want to come back for the, tra the Christmas tradition. Uh, this is, you know, some of you have been doing this a lot longer than me and have bigger farms than I have, but uh, I've been doing this for about 20 years now, and I aim to represent our industry well. Uh, we're going to treat people really well, uh, we're going to give them a good product, and they're going to want to come back. And I hope that you'll do the same. So you're representing me and I'm representing you. And let's uh, have a real positive experience for everybody that comes out to our farms this year. Here's another trip, uh, tip. Even if you're early in it and you don't have a ton of money yet, buy professional grade equipment for you. Uh, I'm I want to talk specifically about rain gear here in the Pacific Northwest. Today it was raining in 39 degrees when I came home. Uh, not the best weather. I'm sure that you people around the Great Lakes and the Northeast are going to be pretty cold and wet. Uh, I have no idea what the weather is going to be like for you people that are a little bit further in the south. But in the Pacific Northwest, you know, I finally invested uh, after a few years uh, with a professional rain gear like the Grundens. Uh, and if you're in a rainy area, I don't know why you would not have a hat with a brim that's waterproof and it's basically an umbrella on your head. Get yourself the proper equipment because once you get wet, you're not getting dry once you're out there that day. So take care of yourself. If you're the boss out there and around where people are loading the trees, there's two things that you should always have on you. I always actually, every day of the year, I have my clippers in my holster and it's ready to go in case you need to clip a branch or the top of the tree. And I recommend you having a box knife in your pocket. It's a lot easier to cut the twine or whatever when people are loading up the trees or need to buy something. So those are two good things to have. Uh, just as another side note while you're at it, if you have holstered clippers, have it more towards the back of your body instead of your front. So when you're bending over to grab and lean things, you're not poking yourself uh, with the tool. And I just like to wear mine a little bit further back instead of in the front. One more thing, uh, last year we decided to invest in carbide tip chains uh, for our chainsaws. It was worth every bit of it. They cost about three times as much as a regular one, but in years past when we're running five saws or whatever out there, the boys were always running back saws and I'm trying to do sales and greet guests and sharpen chainsaws and it wasn't worth it. Um, we, uh, when we got the carbide tip chains, 
uh, we went days without sharpening the saw and just kept cutting and cutting and cutting. So uh, if you're short on manpower and not wanting to uh, be cutting or sharpening a chainsaw all the time, carbide tip chainsaw. And finally, remember you get the honor of being part of everybody else's Christmas. Uh, you might become part of their tradition and their memories. So spread joy, spread cheer, and uh, just give everybody warm feelings on their farm. Be blessed, everyone. I'm out there with you.